A few days ago, I got this. I got it from a four-year-old Norwegian girl called Elisa. And in the jar, there are three Norwegian crowns. <laughs> and on the card, it says, Dear Nikolai, could you please look after my money in the oil fund? Now, I keep this jar in my office to remind me what my job is about. It's to safeguard the wealth for future generations. And being the CEO of the biggest sovereign wealth fund in the world, on behalf of all Norwegians and you guys, is such an honor. That's why I just love my job. Now, the numbers ticking behind me here is the real-time value of the Norwegian Sovereign Wealth Fund. This fund is basically the resources that we have generated on the Norwegian shelf, and it belongs to all of us, not just someone. The fund and the money from the fund pays for roads, education, and healthcare. And it is the savings for our children, their children, and their children again. And if you can convince me that there is a better job out there than looking after this wealth, you have to give me a ring. Now, how did we end up in this situation? How did we end up with this fortune? We need to go all the way back to the North Sea, to 1965, when the, Norwegian, when the shelf was divided between Denmark, Norway, and the United Kingdom. And little did we know that we would end up with all this wealth. So the foreign exploration companies, they were drilling and drilling, and they didn't find a thing. One empty well after the other. One of these foreign companies was Philips Petroleum. And in 1969, they were drilling the last well. We have to go out now to the North Sea, okay? A dark, cold day in October. And we are on board, you know, the rig Ocean Viking. It's two o'clock in the morning and Ståle Salvesen was told to wake up the rig chief, Ed Seaborn, two in the morning. Ed Seaborn was not pleased. Hey, you need to have a very good reason to wake me up in the middle of the night. Well, he for sure had, because they had just found Ecofisk, the largest offshore oil field in the history. A couple of months later, Philips announced to the Norwegian government that they had found oil. This was the day before Christmas Eve. Wow, what a Christmas gift to the Norwegian people. Or was it, actually? In many countries where they had found the oil, it had been a curse rather than a blessing. It had crowded out some other industries, had led to underinvestments in various areas, it had led to corruption, had led to some people becoming very, very rich. So the question was, you know, how is Norway going to cope with this? How are we going to avoid what is called the resource curse? The Financial Times wrote an article about this. And they said, you know, the big accomplishment here is not that Norwegians found the oil. It's how they actually cope with it. And it was clear as the country became an oil producer that we needed to have some rules to help us navigate this. 
And so in the early 70s, the government passed a white paper through parliament, and this contained what was called the Ten Oil Commandments. Now, they stated that the resources on the Norwegian shelf should be to the benefit of all of us, not just someone. And this has been the guiding principle behind the Norwegian oil policy ever since. Now, as more and more fields were developed in the 70s and 80s, you know, the oil revenue just exploded. And so in 1990, the government passed an act where they said that all this revenue needs to be put into a separate fund. And in 1996, the first transfer happened. Now, this shows the transfer and it is probably the most important piece of paper in modern Norwegian history. We've not had 25 years since the first transfer. The fund has grown from 2 billion to close to 12,000 billion. That's equivalent to 2 million crowns per Norwegian. Now, that is also Elise's share. And that is why we work so hard in the oil fund. Now, the idea behind the fund was simple. The politicians could only spend the return from the fund. The idea was to save this for future generations with a very, very long time horizon. The perspective was basically eternity. Now, when you have eternity as your horizon, you can be counter-cyclical. And that means you can do the opposite of other people. When they sell shares, you can buy them. That's how you make a lot of money. In 2008, we were hit by the financial crisis. Now, it is the Norwegian politicians who decide how we should invest the money. Okay? Luckily for us, in the middle of 2007, they had decided that we should increase the proportion of equities from 40% to 60%. Now, I remember the financial crisis very well. I hadn't started in the oil fund, but I did work in finance in London, and I woke up every day with a stomach, thinking, how is this day going to pan out? You know, big banks, which were considered too big to fail, they went bankrupt. People lost a lot of money. You know, there were devastations <clears throat> and bankruptcies. But while most other people sold equities and reduced exposures, the Norwegian oil fund bought shares. During the financial crisis, the oil fund bought 1,000 billion worth of shares. During those two years, a small country with less than 0.1% of the world population bought more than half a percent of all the listed companies in the world. Wow. Today, two thirds of the value of the oil fund is the return that we have made for our investments. And in a way, you can say we have found oil twice. First, on the continental shelf, and secondly, in capital markets. The way I look at it, as is, as, is this, as if we have like a big sack of money, and we start out in the middle of the day in Europe. Then in the afternoon, we move to America. And then during the night, we move to Asia, to Singapore. And then in the morning, we get it back. The money sleeps one hour. The remaining 23 hours, the money works on behalf of all Norwegians. It is now so big that the contribution from the fund accounts for more than 20% of the state budget. Now, this would not have been possible without some really good founding principles from the politicians at the time. 
hard work from the people in the oil fund, and we have to admit, a bit of luck. And it's not only the billions which are important here, it is also the fact that it's owned by all of us. Now, we invest in the future of the country, we take care of the money that belongs to Elisa and generations to come. Thank you very much.